Hi there, uh, my name is Craig McHugh. Uh, I'm a candidate for the position of VP Campaigns in the 2020 uh, USI elections. I'm your current Vice President for the Dublin Region, uh, a former sabbatical officer in DC Students' Union and a former part-time officer and class rep. Um, I'm also a former president of the Irish Second Level Students' Union and all around, um, I guess you could call me a student activist, an activist all around. Um, someone called me a hack. Um, I just kind of care quite a lot um, about the student movement um, and that's why I've stuck around for so long. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Um, I have two thirds of a degree from economics, politics and law in DCU. Um, and I will be going back, um, but there's just one or two things I think we really need to sort out um, in, in our system that is so, so seriously flawed. But I'm running for the position of VP campaign. So in this short video, I wanted to talk to you quite, uh, quite briefly. More of it is in my manifesto um, that goes into more detail on this. But I want to talk to you in two sections. First off, about the, the role of kind of campaigns and what I want to do with it. And then second off, more so on the issues, the ones that I'm very much so passionate about. And obviously, just to bear in mind too, that uh, we do have a big policy book in USI. So we do work on plenty more than we talk about in our manifesto. Festo. I've learned that from this year as, as VP Dublin. So um, one of the first things I want to work on is a ladder of participation. I think this is really important. I think we need to be able to expand how we can actually engage students in our campaigns and in our movements. So some people might be willing to show up to a protest, whereas some, some people's participation may just be um, being able to sign a petition. But I think all forms of participation should be recognised and we should encourage all levels of participation. I think that's the best way we can get results because some people are interested in direct action, occupa occupations, etc but some people might not be and um, we need to be able to respect that. Another area I think would be on communication. I want to look into a podcast, a USI podcast, which I think would be really, really cool. Um, I hope to talk about that more in another video. Um, also on accessibility, I think we look, need to look at um, making our stuff way more accessible. So one of the things I want to do is actually make USI policy available in audio format on our website. Um, so people with accessibility issues uh, can access it. Um, a new approach to how we use social media, expand uh, the social media in which we actually use. Um, so maybe look at actually introduce TikTok because I know the next generation of students that are coming in um, are probably going to be less um, in line or le less loving of, of Facebook and whatnot but also how we use how we targeted uh, campaigns and whatnot so I'd be looking to kind of invest more actually in the money that we spend um, in terms of the campaigns you run online to make sure we can maximize the reach uh, that we have um, the pandemic year is what we're facing right now I think we need to adapt um, quite a good bit to, to things. I think we've done that quite well as a team this year, but I want to be able to adapt a lot of our campaigns so we can still meet a lot of the objectives that we want to do, but also there's a number of new things coming up with. So there's going to be a, a load of new things coming down the line um, and we should really be able to adapt to that quite fast uh, as things change, as we move through the kind of next phase of this uh, pandemic. Um, I think we can still demonstrate regularly, um, but I want to increase that level of regularity. So when things start moving back to normality a little bit, um, we should look at being more regular in terms of how we demonstrate whether it's our own uh, campaigns, but also the kind of stuff that we're involved in and, and the engagement we have with other campaigns. I think we should be demonstrating much, much more. I think we saw the fruits of those demonstrations this year, direct action yields the results like in NUIG and DCU and UCC and across the country in the protests that were happening and how powerful demonstrations can be. Um, also expanding who we work with, I think we should really look for common ground with different groups. I think there's also groups out there that we can really work with um, to make sure we uh, we achieve all our, our goals. There's some things we probably won't agree with, but um, I think we should be probably looking uh, at working with all sectors um, of society to make sure that we can actually uh, tap in and, and listen to other people's views um, you know, and, and, and not be so standoffish about certain things and actually sit down with people and talk about things um, because I'm sure we've common ground with, with many sectors, um, whereas we may have less common ground with them in other sectors. Um, I think as well, I mean, you know, in terms of issues, the march is a very, very big thing. You know, I think one that we, we it was historic and it was in 2010 and we were kind of in a similar economic situation to some extent, obviously the, the Troika were coming in. I think there's a big opportunity here to really um, make sure that students' voices are very much so heard on this. Uh, so when it comes to education, on funding, on access, on support, uh, we have to make sure that education isn't touched negatively whatsoever. But I would like to be pitching the argument that investment in higher education, as we have in the last while, investment long term can have an, a massive positive economic impact. Um, so I'd love to be able to pitch that in a different way than we've done perhaps in the past. 
um, and really fighting for a more student friendly uh, recovery. And that leads me into one of the other sections, which is I think we need to really stand up and say, when it comes to austerity and issues like that, uh, we have to say a big no. So at the first National Council uh, <clears throat> of the year, I will be putting forward a motion um, that will position USI as an organisation that rejects any move uh, to, 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 to bring in austerity again. I don't think the Irish people, uh, anyone on this island could, could suffer any more um, austerity. It, 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 it costs a lot of lives, but it also severely damages our system and the access uh, to that education system. And it just really, it really won't work. Um, so I think we should position ourselves against it and fight any, against it um, as, much as, we, as much as we can. I know we're taking up quite a bit of time here, so wrapping up on housing, anyone that knows me um, will know that I'm very, very passionate about this issue, but we can position ourselves in different ways. I think direct action works very, very well, but I think we should also really take take stock of a number of issues. For example, there's gonna be a fall in supply of digs next year. Uh, we need to be able to tackle that and make sure that students aren't shafted into overpriced luxury student accommodation. We need to stop that luxury, those luxury bills. We need to really critically review the national student ac ac uh, accommodation stra strategy um, and work off the new uh, student accommodation position paper that I helped draft with VP Welfare and VP campaigns this year. Uh, we need rent freeze but we also seriously need to sort out the issue with digs we can't have a future uh, where students are staying in a house like a and b setup and the landlord can come in at any time um, and that that's allowed that's absolutely ridiculous it's gone on way too long we need to put an end to it uh, on direct provision um i've i've experienced in this with with the save our shepherd campaign and you know um, almost a year and a half has passed and you know there has not been a wide enough conversation on direct provision. I think we need to step things up a gear here. It isn't just that, I, I think it, it's the Magdalene laundries of our day and it's absolutely abominable um, that this is something that happens in modern Ireland. Um, you know, a country that's presented as such a beacon of liberalization and whatnot. And uh, when this has happened, it's an absolute violation of human rights. And I will work very closely with the VP Equality and Citizenship uh, to fight, fight against it. And finally, on workers' rights and on placement issues, student nurses should be paid, not just during the pandemic, they should be paid throughout um, and especially during this pandemic, um, you know, with, with, with this, uh, with, as long as this virus is here, there's no need for student nurses to not be paid. They're risking their lives out there and they need to be uh, protected. And on the Gwail Talk placement, something I campaigned quite passionately for when I was in DCU Students' Union, there's not a chance they're taking it away from us. Uh, we'll fight tooth and nail for it. There's a number of issues I, I really wanted to cover uh, in this. I've gone on for almost eight minutes, a lot longer than I should have perhaps, but any questions, craig.mcq32 at mail.dcu.ie. Please do check out my manifesto and I'll be happy to take any questions. See you at Congress.